President Tinubu joins other Muslim faithful to celebrate Ida Fitri, urges Nigerians to have faith in him. We must continue to protect the integrity of our government and leadership. More messages of patriotism and unity as Muslims converge at different Eid grounds for Eid al-Fitr. Hope inside for internally displaced persons in Plateau State as government swings into action with visitation to affected villages. And on Good Morning Nigeria today, we shall focus on rekindling the spirit of brotherhood. The just concluded Ramadan fast by Muslim Umar all over the world was essentially a collective response to Allah's command of denial and restraint of all self indulged pleasures and see God's intervention in the face of challenges. And so, with the successful fast by a Muslim faithful, the Idil Fitr offers an opportunity of thanksgiving to commemorate with families and friends, but above all, it is a prayer to strengthen bonds of brotherhood, renew commitment to compassion, peace, and generosity. Just last week, Christians across the globe commemorated the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And for clerics, the message during Easter was a reminder for sacrifice, servitude, love, and of course, brotherhood. Indeed, and you might say the lexicon brotherhood is sparingly used, but across the religion, well, across religion and race, it is an essential ingredient that en encapsulates oneness and unity of purpose. So today, Nigeria similarly struggles to curtail tribalism, ethnic bias, and religious animosity, unlike the foundation of principles on which our founding fathers built the country. And in contextualizing the spirit of brotherhood, let's reference Islam. And according to the ideals of the religion, the concept is not based on economic interest but on love, sometimes referred to as Iman, which the pillar of Islam also amplifies. Observers also have generally agreed that Nigerians as a whole have ridiculed the ideals of religion, putting up huge walls of segregation, bitterness, hatred, and disunity. Now, going through the scriptures of the Bible, God Almighty laid down ten commandments, but the greatest of them all is love for one another. Absolutely, Ademola. Unfortunately, recent events in the country are a contrast to these all-important virtue and one begins to wonder at times with the majority of people presumably from these two religions why then does it seem that peace and unity eludes us indeed jumai it calls for concern and so today on good morning nigeria we shall interrogate the missing link and examine ways we can rekindle the spirit of brotherhood I am Ademola Adewi. This is Good Morning Nigeria. Welcome to the program and Happy Eid Holiday. Welcome to I am Jumwe Yusuf. Thanks for joining us this Thursday morning, Eid Mubarak. We broadcast live on the network service of the NTA. In a moment, we will begin with the highlights of the morning news and much later, newspaper review. Let's now join Olajide Bello for the morning news. Good morning, GD. Good morning, Jumai and Ademola. Good morning, Nigeria. Here is the news. President Bola Tinubu has urged Nigerians to remain patriotic citizens and continue to have faith in his government in its bid to lead the country to greatness. This was the message of the president as he attended Ido Fitru prayers at the Dambarak's Lagos. Kind of uh, resilience sacrifice endurance that we have 
we should preserve that for the country. Be kind and be cheerful giver. Love our country better than any other country. That's the only one that we have. And we must continue to pre protect the integrity of our government and leadership. And meanwhile, Vice President Kashim Shatima was among Muslims that observed the Edo Federal prayer at the Ramat Square in Maiduguri Barano State to mark the end of Ramadan fasting. The Vice President was also hosted to a Daba at the Sheo of Barano's Palace as part of the celebration. Pray for peace, social harmony, and development of our dear nation. That's our prayer and that's our best wish. The Sultan of Sokoto, Mohammed Saad Abubakar III, has urged Nigerian Muslims to remain patriotic and allow the lessons of Ramadan to permeate in their lives. He was speaking while addressing hundreds of Muslims who converged on the Sultan's palace for the traditional Salah message. And away from Eid celebration. State government for the resettlement of internally displaced persons has swung into action by visiting the affected villages across the state because local government area. The committee was the first port of call. I'm very impressed with uh, the effort that government is doing to bring our people back to their root. And part of the uh, issues were also looking out for uh, also uh, part of the amenities that they also that, would, that they were required to stay comfortably. We're looking at their worship centers, we're looking at the water points, we're also looking out for clinics and their schools, anyone that is touched so that a little renovation that will uh, enhance their well-being. Government will also recommend to government to see how they can be able to fix those things quickly for these returnees to return back. The Lagos State Government is set to commence certification of property to ensure they are duly insured according to the laws of the state. This was disclosed by the Special Advisor to the Governor on Urban Development, Olaji Deba Batunde, during a visit to the site of the fire incident at Idumago. We are dealing with highly flammable chemicals. We are dealing with a, 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 a sort of continuity in the building. There is no clear demarc demarcation. If you, you see the, how the building are erected, you will see that there is no clear space. To so say it loud, they did not follow a clear building controlling code. That certificate for fitness is issued every five years. If you don't have that certificate, whether you are, if you are using it for a commercial venture, you are using it for a residential venture, we are going to close down that building, I can assure you, because we want to avert this kind of incidences. And those are the news highlights for now. Good morning, Nigeria. Paper reviewer Chuku Diokoli Ubaja is here. Good morning, Chooks. How are you today? Good morning, uh, Demola. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Happy Salah. Thank you. You said, no, that's not the one you, you <laughs> need to send gifts to people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You cook, people come. Come, people visit. So why didn't no. I get to address before you said, <laughs> do you mind, this is not fair. <laughs> Lady and gentlemen, I'm glad to be here. Uh, it's a beautiful morning. It is. It's good yeah, to see you. and it's, it's good to see you actually. Uh, we have some papers this morning, and then we we'll look at the review. Let me begin with the Daily Trust newspaper. And I uh, begin with the Daily Trust newspaper. I begin with uh, under the mass head now. We have cracks widening in PDP as not central insist on chairmanship. Find the details on page 11. Controversy over price war on London route. you find details on page 18. 
And at the bottom plate of the Daily Trust newspaper, Salah, seek knowledge, pray for leaders, Sultan tells Muslims. Find the details on page 27. Passengers missing as bus plunges into Lagos Lagoon. The sad event took place yesterday. You find the details on page 16. Customs import duty rate falls to 1,238 naira to the dollar. And um, the headlines uh, on the Daily Trust newspaper, CBN sacks 50 more staff with riders 117 gone in 20 days. Staff accuses management of illegality double standard. <coughs> External vendors affected. You find all the details on page 4. And the picture of story, Muslims at the Eid ground across the country as they, co uh, the, they commence their celebration of Eid al -Fitr. Let me quickly go to the leadership newspaper now. And above the mass head, masterminds of Agojeju Odo attack arrested. That's coming from the governor of Kogi State, Ododo. Naftak recalls Benelin syrup, declares it toxic. Details on page 7. New tariff, pressure mounts on FGs, discos to close 8 million metering gaps. You find the details on page 7. Idil Fitur, Buhari Abdusalami Sultan, urge love and prayers. Details on page 7. At the side piece of the picture story, my impeachment won't stand, Shuaibu declares. Want to know what he's talking about? You find the details on page 18. 91 Chibwa girl's parents write Tinibu's wife. Details on page 12. Violation. TikTok deletes 1.7 million Nigerian users' videos in fourth quarter. Details on page 23. Legal team threatens to withdraw from Kanu's case. Details on page 18. And the headlines in the leadership newspaper. As heat wave persists, high energy cost, poor electricity, compound health risk. With riders, children, albinos, elderly, pregnant women, most vulnerable to heat wave. That's coming from health experts. You find the details on page 4. And the picture story there. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu and Chairman FBN Holdings PLC, Mr. Femi Otedola, during Otedola's Salah visit to the President in Lagos yesterday. That's about what I have on the Daily Trust and the leadership. Dimola. All right, thank you. I have the Vanguard newspaper and above the nameplate, transfer of pension money out of Nigeria escalate. Details on page 19. Inquiry, Okwama Community Shans Military Panel, Okoloba in attendance. The details can be found on page 4. PDP neck meeting. Governors, others renew battle for parties soul. The story can be found on page 4. Fair Court, Air Peace Chairman, Oyema Slams Foreign Airlines over Conspiracy. Details can be found on page 9. In the fitri, our security is improving. Uh, the federal government says the details can be found on page 25. And uh, the major headline, tariff hike, 20 hours supply for Bank A customers under threat. As power allocation hovers at 3,236 megawatt. Port Harcourt Disco apologizes for shortfall. Kaduna Disco sets up response teams. No transparency, fairness in billing. CPPE firms will pay for the services they don't enjoy. LCCI experts expect improvement in supply. Details uh, can be found on page 20. Edo gubernatorial issues. My impeachment won't stand. Shwaibo. The details is on page 7. Alleged defamation, Betaido threatens to sue BBC. We have arrested masterminds of Kogi killings, Governor Ododo. The details can be found on page 12. And the front page picture, we can see that uh, the president 
is with some government officials at the eat ground in lagos then we have the wardrobe wants nigeria over olympic preparations says they should prepare you know better the details is on sports page page 29 and back to mr and mrs <laughs> My mom called. She said I sounded frail over the phone, that I must have lost weight. I'm not surprised if she's, if she's still using that old, cheap and lightweight phone. Everything she does with it becomes weightless. <laughs> That's a good one. <clears throat> Chooks. Everything she does with a weightless phone <laughs> becomes weightless mm. let them buy a sophisticated iphone for iphone for, for her money. iphone 14 <laughs> for she money. Deserves it. don't tell me how could you buy <laughs> such expensive phone for people just to just make calls mm. and maybe send sms sms but she deserves it yes yeah, she does mothers are mothers okay. uh, but that's a, really a funny one that, that's a good one that's a good one um we started by telling a uh, our colleague here uh happy salah um I actually before we went on the air i said jumai i didn't get any gift from you and she explained to me that idel malud is the big one of course mm -hmm. no event in a religion is lesser, lesser yes, yes, yes. they are all important mm, yes. but she explained that uh, idel malud is the one that requires you if you can afford it to send gifts to people mm. yesterday you were supposed to know the person's address. She didn't give me hers. <laughs> Usually the gifts eat. are given during the Ramadan itself. When oh. yeah, you can send food to people during Ramadan, they can come to your house to break their fast. You know, it's a process for 30 days. You just, it's just continuous yeah, like you just that. just go from one yes, place to the now, other. Yes. Now, this takes me to something we should appreciate. The feeding of many people by yes. some important, Ni please everybody is important, mm. some Nigerians who could afford it, mm. the oneness it created in people's minds, yes. the community life, Africa is known for, mm. those things were really commendable. Yeah. President Ahmed Bolatin will pray that the Dodden Barracks grounds in Lagos, yes, uh, the, this paper said ground, I think it is grounds actually, that's yes, the grounds, English yeah. of it. Uh, and then he talked about sacrifice, which we need to show at this time. Father went on to plead with Nigerians to support his government. Some cynics will say, do we have a choice? <laughs> but it goes beyond that. Whoever is in leadership, is believed by some of us to have been installed by God. Right. If God does not support Jumai being my president, Jumai cannot last on the throne. Mm. So if a leader gets um, elected and he stays there, please consider it as God's choice. Mm. So we should support. Cynical people support don't make work. a lot of progress yes. in life. People tell me, you're an incredible optimist. <laughs> I tell them that's why Chooks the Boy laughs all the time. And you I'm going like, to smile into my grave. I don't like pessimists at all. I, no, they, they kill my day. Yeah, I'm an optimist. And my person. father, when we was alive, would tell you, small man, you're petty. Come on. <laughs> there was a man in my village. He had a case in Oguashuku in those days with somebody. He was one of the few people that had cars. Each time he was going to Oguashuku, he would call the person he had a case against in Oguashuku. They go together. They go together. Say, you're a wonderful man. Say, a court case does not mean that you're my enemy. Enemy at all. Only broad-minded <clears throat> people think like that. He eventually lost the case. Mm. And, they, and he was taking the uh, other litigant to, to, to court in his car. I like broad-minded human mm. beings. They make you happy. That is the spirit of brotherhood. Yes. Mm. Then uh, let's quickly go to one very good one. They say anything that rises in Nigeria never comes down. Dangote Group is telling you, no, that's not true. The proposal, if it has not started already, is that diesel is likely to go down from uh, to 1,200 1, naira per litre mm. from 1,650. Mm. Remember, I wrote mathem mm. mathematics three times and failed it four <laughs> times. So you do the subtraction and tell us the they're difference. Uh, they're actually proposing that it will go down to between 1,000 to 850 naira. Mm. No. And fall to 5,550. I, 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 I like the smile it brings to your lips. <laughs> Takes you away from that territory of band A, you know, soliloquy. <laughs> 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 and you, you know, you know, you, 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 you like the smile, but you didn't see the new look on Demola. New look? 
Oh, okay. You know, the, the wild grass there. I don't like people who wear it. Well, some beards are really rich. Yeah. I never ever attained that level. Don't worry. Don't worry. But I'm the just, scanty I'm, ones, I'm I, do, just, I don't like. I'm that. just growing this. <laughs> That's a good one. I want all the Please wear yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, if, yeah. If, if it oh, please, quickly. Yeah. Talking about band A. Yes. I loaded 12,000 naira this morning. Mm. I had 26 units. And the thing went up to 146. Yes, you are not in band A now. You are not in band A. Don't announce that I come from the Twitter. <laughs> And like, after some know, time, I went back. It went to two hundred and six units. Maybe yes. one of the people who are getting a refund. Yes, yes, refund. Yes, yes. You're, you're not. You're not. You're not. You're I was excited. I, 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 you know, I, I would I, have jumped. I, did you like jump us, with joy? Yes. Band A. Yeah. Uh, we are coping very well. Yes. But you see, there is a problem right now because see, twenty hours supply for Band A customers on the threat. threat. Yes. So what do you say about that? What what sort of threat? That means it's not going to get to twenty. 20 hours how good now if that is the case i go back to my usual maxim here fair is fair if they don't get up to 20 hours don't build them like people who are in the 20 hours band or territory it's as simple well, as that well and the health experts are also saying that high energy costs poor electricity compound health risks i i i, I saw some of my um, neighbors using generator over the night, their unit finished, and then they had to resort to generator. You yes. know, we are to, we're talking about zero emission by 2030, and with this tariff now, most people in band A will be more will be leaning more towards using the generator. And yes, emission. But, but, but to be fair, in the mm. past one week, we've had um, electricity for more than 20 hours in my area. So yes, we've had but the. <coughs> The, the, the rain of day before you see the one they took the light around 9 p.m they didn't bring it until 11 a.m on tuesday morning it affected even yes. even band z people i like don't me, understand why you know? a little wind the light goes off in nigeria in other places they have tornadoes they have uh, you know whatever in exactly. other climes, and then the, the, the electricity is exactly. there what is the problem with this country where there's a little wind Shh. Electricity goes off. Oh well, for it, hours. it means that some standards are not met. They are not met. Yes, because not um, met. you are supposed to have steady power. When I was a, in a Nepal clerk, you know, you you were Nepal clerk. I was a Nepal clerk. It was He's a the man. Ma <laughs> yes. I've, I've seen the world a bit. What, what have you? D O Benin then uh, 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 Martin Sobi. Where is that useless clerk? <laughs> Have you done the fast of trace clearing? You know, those pylons. And uh, yeah. so I finished it. Uh, he called me a useless clerk. <laughs> but the man eventually gave me a, a job, a, you know, vocation job, when those things were not going on. Yes. He said, my son, I knew you would not stay mm. when I got into uni then. And uh, great human being. He was trained at, at Sapele Power Station or Gorodi. Mm. He was always shouting. And I was wondering why. British trained. They said at Sapele Power Station, because of the revving of the engines, you have to raise your voice it's okay. to be heard. It became their habit. Their oh. habit. Where is that useless plug? <laughs> this is Grillo. Oh, no, it was wonderful. <laughs> You're a jack of all trades. Oh, well, I've, I've, I've kicked around a bit. You've mastered all. Well, I thank God for small mercies. Did you, did you, did you, did you drive Kabu Kabu? Kabu Kabu. <laughs> you know what Kabu Kabu is? <laughs> Please. Kick me out. <laughs> so, with that, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, Chooks. So thank you. Enjoy the remaining of your holiday. Thank you. All right. Yeah, I, I'm going to wish you guys well for a few days, you know, from yeah. tomorrow. Uh, but I, I trust, uh, by God's grace, I'm going to bounce back with it in a few days, too. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank Chooks. you, Chooks. Nigeria is a country with more than 200 million people and approximately 371 tribes across over 250 ethnic groups sharing major religions including Christianity and Islam as well as few others practicing traditional religion. Even before British colonization and eventual amalgamation of the northern and southern protectorates of Nigeria by British colonial rule in 1914, Intergroup relations such as intertribal marriages, trade, and cultural exchange had already bonded many. As at independence in 1960, 
The expectation was that the people would unite, explore the nation's diversity in human and natural resources to build a great and prosperous country. Enhancing unity in diversity to behavioral scientists starts with good neighborhood or brotherhood, as exemplified in that bond that made a Fulani man to refer to a thief man as my brother, that we supported an Igbo brother from the East to become a successful businessman in remote areas of the Hausa community, and a cultural diffusion between the Yoruba and Hausa in a common traditional attire of Agbada, among many other examples. To them, brotherhood provides the ability to closely communicate, understand and empathize with each other. It is from these factors that love and support systems are built to propel prosperity among individuals and development of communities. Today, Nigeria is not just facing a difficult economic spell, but also a threat to its unity with communal crisis, crime, sectionalism, terrorism, and struggle for resource control, among other challenges taking places in different parts of the country. Though analysts have largely attributed the current crisis the country is passing through to high level of corruption and lack of patriotism over a long period of time, they pin the challenges to a rooted sense of brotherhood being gradually replaced by individualism that is nurtured by selfishness. To build a strong nation where peace and prosperity flourish, some concerned Nigerians are advocating rekindling brotherhood where love for one another and the country defines citizens' existence. What will it take to rekindle brotherhood in Nigeria is what will engage guests on Good Morning Nigeria. Thank you, Joseph Olsen, for the background report. And now joining us in the studio this morning is Ustaz Abubakar Sadiq Muhammad, National Mosque Abuja, and Managing Director, Comoral Travels and Trust Limited Abuja. You're welcome to Good Morning. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to have you. And also here in the studio is Ustaz Abdul Fattah Adeyemi. He is the former uh, founder, CEO, Bainakum Family Counseling Center, Abuja, and Director, International Center for Islamic Culture and Education, Arnur Mosque, Abuja. It's a pleasure to have you join us. Being here too. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Barak. Thank you very much. Okay, while we still await the other guests, let's begin our conversation uh, with uh, Ustaz Sadiq Mohammed. Uh, who is the National Mosque Abuja Managing Director, Comrails Travels and Tours. Now, when we, what essentially do we mean when we talk about the spirit of brotherhood? And uh, why is it so important that we promote brotherhood uh, irrespective of you know, religion or ethnic affiliation? It's because we are all in it together in everything that we do uh, as citizens in a given environment or citizens in in a country uh, especially ours uh, Nigeria when I see you as an enemy and I see as everybody being against me and I only recognize my own either my tribe or my religion then that impedes uh, the progress of that society and the development of that uh, country. Uh, whatever you think you possess as an ethnic group or as a tribe, because the, the normal issue is over my dead body, my daughter will not, uh, uh, he knows better uh, yes. because he always uh, yes. treats uh, marital problems. Uh, my daughter will not be married to somebody from so 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 tribe because they are not disciplined, because they don't respect their elders. Whatever makes you think that your tribe is better than the other person's, the same laws, the same etiquette, the same character, the same respect for elders exist 
it is your ignorance and not your reaching out that makes you think that you are the best oh. that is why that is why the quran says beautifully O oh mankind we have created you from a single male and a female everybody you're all from adam and adam is from earth and have made you into tribes and nations not that you quarrel with one another or you look down upon one another it's for you to recognize that recognition makes you see the good and beauty in others not confine it confining it to yourself and in another place the, the quran says it's part of allah's design the difference in your languages and color so whether you are black whether you are white whether you are uh, Igbo, whether you are uh, yoruba whether you are hausa whether you are fulani whether you are whatever recognize you are from one source and you share many things that Allah has made and embedded in the human nature that is shared that is shared by all is not confined to any group no tribe is more disciplined than the than the other no tribe is more trained than, than the other no tribe respects its elders more than any other tribe but let us reach out understand recognize respect and move on hmm. that's recognize respect and, and move, move on. on talking about recognizing each other respecting each other we have this nigerian thing that we you know we, we have he's, he's my sister he's my brother but why don't we inculcate it into our actions into our relations with each other and why do you just use it as lip service some people call it well, at this stage of our nationhood uh, do, uh, uh, should we still be talking about you know rekindling our brotherhood or sisterhood shouldn't we have moved beyond this thank you very much let me build on what uh, Ustaz just explained to us now mm -hmm. if we were all to go back to our mother's wombs and our mothers go back to her own mother's womb we'll continue to go back like that until we reach one single womb Mm. And that's the womb of Eve or Hawa. So somehow, technically, if I may say, we are all the same brothers and sisters. We've all been created from one single soul, like what was quoted earlier on. So bearing that in mind should have even solved all the problems. Because truly, um, my brother seated here, if we go by six generations, backwards you get to be surprised that your own generation six six lines away they are related to mine but because of movement travels expansion of uh, humanity we have lost touch of that that's another way of looking at it it doesn't matter what languages we speak if a nigerian child is born in Chi in china for example and the child grows up in China, he will speak Chinese more than even the original Chinese people. So I'm just saying that some of these differences in language, differences in colors, differences in tribes are just accidents. It's not as if we planned it by ourselves. We didn't choose our parents. And so what is important for us to recognize that very well, like what he just said now, we should recognize the fact that we are all from one single source and because we are we live in different environments and we speak different languages doesn't mean that we should lose that uh, you know recognition of one another mm -hmm. now like what we now said now why are we still talking about this now well it is still superficial in my own way of looking at it because nigerians in diaspora they don't think of tribes anymore any nigerian that sees another nigerian in fact we recognize each other a lot. <clears throat> you see somebody and you'll be like, this person should be a Nigerian. And in London City, like some people said, if somebody should shout in Yoruba language, some people come around and say, what's going to happen? Mm. Something like that. So I believe that if we could do that in the diaspora, we only need to extend it here. And I also have this thought that it's not general. 
the people who do this segregation and stuff, they are very few in number. They are either not exposed or not educated or they have not traveled far and wide or they don't have friends on the social media. They don't have friends on Facebook, you know, those kind of things. People who friend people all around, they don't think in that term of saying, okay, this is an Igbo man, this is a Yoruba man. People who are successful businessmen and women who contribute to the growth of Nigeria, they don't talk about tribe. They just talk about, okay, you are my business partner, we do this together on the board of a particular company. You see Hausa, you see Efik, you see Orobo. Everybody, nobody thinks of tribe when it comes to that. But maybe politicians have their ways of... Um, have used it as a tool of separate Thank you. Reality. It is their own world, it is their own way of thinking, it is their own way of reasoning. That's how they scheme on things. And perhaps they have used this and we have always fell for it. So I just want all of us to go back to what it's supposed to be. When we do NYC, nobody thinks of uh, one tribe or the other tribe. And it is still operant up to now. So in a nutshell, I think we are still okay. We only really need more of this orientation to bring us back to see that there are more people who love their brothers than the few who go the other way. Okay, thank you very much, Ustaz uh, Adiyemi, for your opening uh, remarks there. That uh, we need to go back, you know, to where we came from, and that is due to lack of exposure. Uh, that is part of the challenges that we are having. Now, while the conversation was going on, uh, the other guest came in, and uh, let me just uh, quickly introduce uh, Professor Rafat. Abdul Hamid, member Women in Dawal. Uh, you are welcome, Professor. Thank you very it's much. Good morning, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And also from our Ibado studio, we have uh, we have Reverend Dr. Israel Akoji. Reverend Dr. Israel Akoji is the President, Nigeria Baptist Convention Fellow of African Religion and President All African Baptist Fellowship. Reverend Dr. Akoji, you are welcome to Good Morning Nigeria. Good morning, all of you. All right, Dr. Akoji, let me just stay with you there. Uh, we are talking about the issue of brotherhood. And I know you have been following the conversation here. And uh, some of the reasons that have been alluded to these, uh, the challenges, uh, it's about the issue of ignorance and uh, lack of exposure but i want to find out from you how can we overcome the long-standing religious and ethnic divides in nigeria to foster a sense of unity and brotherhood amongst uh, the citizens um, i have listened to other panelists and i have enjoyed uh what they have shared with us of course uh, all of them there are not uh, strange people to me. We have met several times at discussions before, and I'm not surprised that they are uh, being forthright in the way they are presenting the position on the matter of rekindling brotherhood. Now, uh, by way of beginning, I would say to say we should rekindle brotherhood means that we have an understanding that there was brotherhood at some time, but something has happened to it. Whether the fire has gone down uh, and it now needs to be restarted or that uh, it is not at the level that it should be, so we need to fan into flame the strength of such brotherhood. Yes, there used to be better brotherhood in the past in Nigeria. We didn't have the kind of conflicts that we have now, uh, terrorism and all kinds of things. We were not experiencing this in the past. Uh, we were different, but we were united in, in the country. Uh, and we lived peacefully with one another. There are some people from the north. They cannot make money in the north until they get to Lagos in the south or get to Port Harcourt or Onitsha. That's where the Hausa man will find his daily bread. He can't find it in the north. He will leave the north and go there. And there he will be blessed. And he will be a blessing to his family. 
There are many people that are Yorubas. They cannot get their own daily bread in the Yoruba land. They will move to Maiduguri and Sokoto. That is where they will get their daily bread. That is how it is. The Igbo people too, they move from their own place and they find themselves in Kano. And uh, even if there are difficulties, they will still return to Kano because the Igbo man, it is in that Kano that he is able to make his daily sustenance. So there has been so much hospitality in the country in the past, and that's why we have had free movement. Otherwise, some places will be no-go areas, but we don't have such in the country as much as possible. However, now, we all agree, like the people who have spoken before me, uh, we all agree that things have gone wrong. And, uh, and of course, this conversation is very important in order for us to rekindle this brotherhood which existed in the country in the past and uh, which we do not have anymore. I want to talk on uh, just three key areas. Uh, one was mentioned uh, slightly, but not uh, strongly by one of the speakers uh, when he said uh, sometimes politics uh, is involving this issue of uh, uh, the strangeness uh, and, and strangeness that we are putting ourselves into. That is really true. Uh, we cannot doubt the fact that uh, we have become more politically sophisticated and the, our differences are being capitalized upon when it comes to politics. So uh, politics helps to exacerbate the issue of uh, our differences and uh, we, we have to continue conversation on this. See, we will always be people that are different. However, we are not supposed to utilize the differences in a negative way. It is supposed to be a blessing to the entire nation that uh, we come from various places and we can do different things in different ways. We should appreciate that. So from the point of view of politics, we must be very aware so that we will not be politically dragged into uh, all this uh, lack of brotherhood which is existing. At the end of the day, we get to know politicians we meet, they will sit together, they will enjoy together, while they have uh, caused a lot of rancors among those that are their followers. So that is one of the things. Another thing that I want to emphasize has to do with uh, religion. Uh, it is not only ethnic differences we have. We have religious difference. We have Christians, we have Muslims, we have traditionalists, we all are there. But you see, because of our common humanity, our needs are the same. A hungry Christian and a hungry Muslim and a hungry traditionalist, they all are hungry. We have so many things that, uh, that are common to us. If there is insecurity, there is insecurity for everyone. It doesn't matter what your religion is, insecurity is for everybody. There are a lot of things that bind us together. And uh, those things uh, are strong enough to make us to always come together. But uh, again, the people who want to exploit us, they emphasize the difference in our religion to try to uh, make us act differently. You, 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 you must agree with me that in Nigeria, there is a lot of religious ignorance. People who try to interpret religion differently from the from the text of the religion because of their own uh, uh, illiteracy about the content of the faith, the content of the religion. It affects us because somebody is misinterpreting what the scripture is saying. For, for, for a Christian, the Bible says that do unto others as you will want others to do unto you. And the Bible says again that you should seek peace with all men and pursue it. He didn't say seek peace with Christians. He says seek peace with all men and pursue it. So these are scriptures that tell us that the, if you are a Christian, you must love everybody. You, you must live in love. It is love that is supposed to be the, uh, the badge of a Christian life. And that love is not restricted to loving your, the, your fellow Christians alone. You must love everybody, men, women, young, old, 
That is what it is. Anywhere you find the opportunity to render help, you must render help irrespective of the religious differences. But some people who are misinterpreting religion, they are giving religion a bad name. And we have to watch it so that there is a real uh, duty for religious leaders in handling this issue of brotherhood. And then the other one is family. What do we teach our children about the other person? The things we say, and the family is very, very important. That is the, 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 the smallest unit of the society, and that is where everything begins. What do parents teach their children? Do parents even have time for their children? If, as a father, you see somebody who is not uh, of your own tribe or of your own faith, and you speak negatively about the person, you are making an impression upon your child, and your child will grow with that impression that this, what my parents are saying, they are saying the right thing. So we, we must not demonize one another. We must not say derogatory things about one another. If you are Yoruba, don't derogate the Hausa man or the Fulani man. If you are a Fulani man, don't look down on the Igbo man. If you are an Igbo man, don't look down on the Yoruba man. We do things differently. Sometimes we have our different kind of food that we eat. Don't abuse this person's food. You know, after all, like somebody has said, it's ignorance of what that person is eating that is making you to abuse his food. If he is eating something that is not killing him, why are you saying something negative about it? So, from the family, a lot should be done. And I have an example to, to share briefly on this family issue. I am a pastor, and uh, at the time, I was, I was in the United Kingdom uh, uh, in Scotland. And... Uh, some, some people came visiting me, uh, and I just saw Imam Ashafa and Pastor Wiyep. I saw them at a program. So they said they would be coming to my house, and the two came. And uh, as soon as they entered my sitting room, Imam Ashafa just went to a corner of, the, of my sitting room, and he started praying. He was praying the Muslim prayer in the sitting room of a pastor. And my children ran to me, hey, dad. Somebody's doing Muslim prayer in our house. Why? Then I said, shh, children, he's praying. You have to respect prayer. You know that when we pray in the house, we all respect prayer. So please respect him. He's praying. I did not go and say, Imam, stop that, that's your prayer. This is a pastor's house. I didn't do that. What do you think I left with my children? I left with my children the truth that they should respect somebody who is praying in that way. My children will have it in their minds all their lives, not to disrespect somebody who is praying in a Muslim way, because this man was my guest, and he decided to pray in my sitting room, and I taught my children how to react to it. This is, these are some of the things we must do. The coming generation, I, they must be, we must prepare them to be able to live as brothers. So this is part of the way to rekindle. Let's work in our family, work on politics, and ensure that religious leaders, they are able to teach the truth of their scriptures that will bring us harmony in the nation, not division. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Reverend um, Dr. Israel Akonji, for your, for, your, for your comments there. I'm sure anybody watching this program now will begin to understand why we need to come back, you know, as brothers, come back to the drawing, drawing board and ensure that we spread and promote the national values of this of this country. Let 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 let's bring in um, Professor uh, Rafat into the conversation. Good morning, it's good to see you. Uh, as part of your da'wa, you go out there every day, reach hard to reach areas. You're not always at home, and um, trying to tell people the goodness of God, trying to tell people that we are one as a person, irrelevant of our ethnicity or our religion or our tribe how easy is it for you to talk to people in nigeria to tell them that this is our country we should love it and come together as brother and sister just like it used to be before thank you very much for that question um let me start by building on what my brothers and my brother was the reverend has said in terms of um rekindling the brotherhood universal brotherhood um, as they were talking, I was also remembering uh, 
the verse that the, my brother has um, cited to us that is Surah Al Hujrat, chapter 49, verse 13. And for Muslims, I think this is the most important, you know, aspect of brotherhood, universal brotherhood that Islam has provides for us. And if Muslims will look at that verse very critically, we can go on and on, you know, expatiating on this particular verse because the verse talks about so many areas, issues of colors, issues of uh, culture, issue of tribe, and so on and so forth. And at the end of it all, you see, Allah says that it is for us to know each other. And I just remembered again another verse of the Quran where in uh, Surah uh, uh, Isra, chapter 17 by 7, verse 17, where Allah says, Bismillah rahman rahim wa laqad karamna bani Adam, that Allah has honored mankind, that is the children of Adam, meaning that we are all from one source, one source, just like Hujrat Hujrat has explained to us. And that has not stopped there. We have seen a practical demonstration of these verses and others from the lifetime of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him. And we have seen, especially when he migrated from Mecca to Medina, where he established the universal brotherhood, he knew that the cooperation of all and sundry is important for him to be able to administer the society or the Muslim Ummah, the Muslim Empire. And he ensured that he introduced so many concepts or aspects of universal brotherhood, especially starting with the constitution of Medina, where he involved all the tribes, all the religions that were existing within the society. And that was how he was able to, and he administered with justice. In this way, whether you are a Muslim or non-Muslim, because when he migrated, he met the non-Muslims and he did not force them to accept Islam, but he recognized them and he gave them their rights. And that was how Islam continued to expand. So I just want to build here that if we can go back and look at those verses to learn a lot of lessons from it, and then again to also look at the practical aspect of the Prophet Sallam, because even history tells us that the Prophet Sallam, many of the most people that accepted Islam was not as a result of his pages, but because of his ways how he you know, mingled with them, how he interacted with them, they became enticed about the religion. And this is what we are doing, especially when we talk about da'wah. We look at the prophet as our model, and we go according to his teachings and sunnah, which is the, which is the practice, of course. And then we know of course, there are challenges, but then still we have learned from him, issue of tolerance is there. With every Muslim, every preacher, supposed to look into it and practicalize it. Tolerance in the sense that you respect other people's religion, other people's culture. That does not mean that you have to do as they are doing. That is why even in another verse, Allah said, Lakum dinukum wa To you, to, to them is your religion, to, you is their, and your, to them is your religion, to them is their religion, and to you is your own religion. So everybody will have that safe environment, that safe space to practice his religion and then because of our ways of doing things you will see many people will embrace the fold of islam because islam like we have said is a complete way of life of every muslim and that is why even in terms of preaching even in terms of encouraging people motivating people to accept islam islam has prescribed ways of doing that and that is why we have also seen another verse because allah one says that that call on to the way of your Lord with wisdom and good preaching. So this implies that even where we are preaching, you don't want you don't supposed to relegate or derelegate other people's religion simply because you want your religion to be accepted. You need to give them that you know reception, that environment so that they will realize, let them be able to, you know, make up their mind. Let them be able to be convinced that this religion is the best of all religions. And they accept it wholeheartedly. And that is the way, especially what, what we do. And this is why sometimes when we go out for, you know, preaching and other things, we see that many people embrace Islam. And because, not because we force them, not because, but we show them that the religion of Islam 
is a universal religion and despite the fact that they also you know have their own religion they have their right to practice their religion not only when they are muslims and we give them that opportunity to ensure that all these things they can do within the framework of islam and this is what every preacher should be expected to do that notwithstanding we have challenges just like we have uh, some of us have uh, enumerated um the issue of i like the the, the, the issue of politics very very uh, apt especially in our present dispensation i think this is the right time it's an opportunity to call on our politicians you know the love of power makes us to do so many things going out even beyond our religion whether you are muslim or a christian we go beyond the teachings of the religion you know because of our love of power we want to have it at all costs that also islam has given us rule how god guides they guide us and that is why even if muslim politicians would take into the teachings of islam religious politicians need to also understand islam because politics is embedded in islam how can we practice politics without necessarily going beyond our tenets going beyond our religious uh, principles and not also you know tampering or going after or you know other people's religion and practices so that we can even attain this point. because power belongs to allah says according to the quran it belongs to allah and he gives to whoever he wishes so if muslim politician will take into this i don't think we should use religion as a tool to attain power which is most likely this as least some of the things that is happening today and that is why you see that uh, especially all of us are in this present this we have seen what is happening muslim muslim christian christian it is on call for let people you know choose their leaders on based on merit let let allow people to choose based on their own opinion what they feel they should move we to never use religion to to preach and to know so these are some of the issues that we are having in our society and until when we are able to go in according in accordance to the teachings of our religion what are the requirements for a muslim leader what are the requirements for a christian leader the muslims should be allowed to choose and all the other religions should also be allowed to choose with their leaders based on the requirement as we have seen and then again look at the issue of our intermarriages i was really really um, you know fascinated when the issue of the family wow well, how we were we were before before this issue of uh, and i just remembered that intermarriages existed why because this concept of universal brotherhood was in practice and that is why you see a yoruba man marrying a hausa woman a, a, a an igbo man married you know many cultures we have we intermingle in terms of marriage i'm a product of inter i'm also a product because yeah. i'm not i'm a yoruba i'm not married to a yoruba man and we are living very happy and we have children this is a practical example of you know universal brotherhood in islam and nobody is looking at all no say because this person is hausa or this yoruba and so on and so forth but today you know the issue has changed so and now what i was just thinking is that this our generation we have given back to children to different tribes <laughs> so if we continue what will be the implication of this children where we, we have brought to the world what is the implication we must begin to think and until when we go back and then look at it very carefully so that we can reunite as islam has prescribed again <coughs> the issue of family again when reverend was talking i was just looking at myself as the mother what is my role because in islam islam looks at the mother as the first school of the child how far have we been able to inculcate in our children this concept of universal brotherhood how do we look at our brethren who are not muslims how do we interact with them how do we as you know associate with them how what do we tell them from the point of view of islam because these are very important issues because allah subhanahu wa created all of us and he wants all of us to live on earth every muslim every non muslim has right to live and so what do we do to ensure that these children of ours as a mother you have pretty ruler okay we are muslims and yes islam is the best religion to every muslim islam is the best religion to a non muslim is all religion is also you look at it so it does not matters you tell and that will not you know 
you know, depict or the minus or remove anything from my faith or the faith of my child, depending on how I am able to treat the kids. So what here it means that mothers and parents in general need to understand the true concept of religion so that they can be able to inculcate that into their children so that we will have a peaceful society. Thank you. Rasul Sallallahu we have seen Bilal. Yes. Bilal is not him, he was not a, 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 an Arab. But he became the first Muazzin. All right. Despite the fact that there were many Arabs Muslims. So these are some of the issues I think uh, we should look at. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, <laughs> Professor Rafa. There you have spoken so much. And uh, you, you've said so much about uh, the issue of tolerance, the role of the family, and also for our leaders you know, to rethink the way they go about you know, politicizing the issue of brotherhood. Now, now that we have laid the foundation for this discussion, rekindling the spirit of brotherhood, there is need for us to find the missing links uh, and also how do we begin to retrace our steps, Ustaz Muhammad. Because I remember that uh, when I was younger, my father married, my father you know, was a Christian and my mom is a Muslim. In fact, she's a larger. Hmm. I called her yesterday to wish her um, Eid Fitri, yes. happy Eid Fitri and all that. My uncle is staunch Muslim, but the, the wife was a Christian. You understand? And when I go to their house, he doesn't stop the children from going to church, despite the fact that he was a staunch Muslim. And likewise, my dad, in those days, when we normally follow our mom to, to the mosque to pray, especially during the Ramadan. We just said, no, you're, you're free to go. Go, 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 go. If you want to go and pray with your mom, go and pray. It doesn't stop you. So you have to choose whether you want to be a Muslim or a Christian. It's your choice. I'm not going to force anybody. Now, that was then. Mm -hmm. But these days you find out that it's so difficult that you find all these intermarriages, you know, interreligious and all that. It, I, I don't know. How do we begin to retrace our steps? How do we begin to, you know, fix all these links that we had in the past? Thank you very much. Uh, and I think I will stay with myself. Uh, there is something that I have not, I've never mentioned uh, in public. I will do that today. Uh, and I hope uh, Reverend Dr. Israel is also listening to me carefully. <laughs> of course, we have met in several places, as he has said. My, when he said, when he said, uh, some people would leave the, the north and go to Lagos. I thought he was speaking about me, <laughs> because my grandparents, my grandparents lived in Lagos. My mother was born in Lagos. I've never said this in public. Hmm. My mother was born in Lagos. My grandparents spoke Yoruba fluently. When Queen Elizabeth, I think, either the Queen Mother or the other Queen, came to Lagos for the second time, he went to the stadium to see the Queen. And in his absence, my, my mother and her twin sister uh, came into this world. My grandmother was a Fulani man, a Fulani woman. <laughs> <laughs> so until he died, my 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 grandfather was Baba Meji, and when they returned to the north, people could not pronounce Meji properly, so he was called Baba Meji. <laughs> <laughs> so you 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 needed to ask what was his name, because that name has has gone. Everybody would say Baba Meji, and and is 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 the 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 uh, 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 alliteration of the of the Yoruba Meji that they, 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 they now they, they now changed it to 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 Megi. So and when Israel also spoke about about food, whether we like each other's food or not, I, I don't know, maybe it's because my parents were born in, in, in Lagos. My my best food is Amala and we do <laughs> <laughs> I like Begiri as well. Yeah. <laughs> but on a more serious note, uh when politicians come in, I think I mean uh, the, the the prof has talked in, in that in that pro uh, dawa uh, 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 uh 
lecture because she, 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 she spoke well uh, on that. But when they came to us, I think what, what, we should, what, what, what we should be wary of is when they use either ethnicity or religion. We should always think about our roots. We should always think about not only roots, but uh, how we were before politics, before they came. Uh, when you look at, the, at, at what we are currently experiencing, uh, religious leaders also at times forget their calling. And they fall prey to the, uh, the evil devising of the political class. Uh, they see themselves as a family. They will fight. All the people that have, that have fought the current president, for example, are back in the... In the, in the fold. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Some of them went in anger. How can you say we'll do this? Blah, 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 blah. They, they resigned from the party, changed party. This. Now everybody's coming back. So when, when, when they... When they want to do the budget and to pad it and to put their interest, nobody thinks about uh, the the, 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 the no 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 they, they are one family. They are from yeah, they, yes <laughs> we, we, yes they we, you know we, when they inflate the contracts they, they do that as you know so let as us, partners as partners mm -hmm. they are partners they it's not religion now we are politicians we are a family so the rest of us uh, should also especially as I said re religious leaders. We went out of our way, we took sides, the pulpit was transformed into a political platform. We abused ourselves, we said bad things about each other. Uh, we, 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 we did all sorts of things that uh, we should not look at ourselves in the mirror and be ashamed of what we did and say never again. Uh, so politics or no politics, our constituency is different from that of the politicians and we are the ones to tell them what to do and how to do it because uh, they cannot vote for themselves they would come to us to 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 to, to influence uh, what we are doing so really really we should we should uh, we should uh, uh, look at that and and avoid and avoid problem areas if we agree this may be sensitive if we agree that we are one and we should try by words and action to show and and depict that we are really one uh, we should look at competence which is very important whatever anybody can do uh, because as I think the anchor said when we started, uh, we go to the same market, we experience the same thing. Uh, if the dollar goes up, we are in trouble, all of us. All of us. Uh, no, 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 nobody is spared. Uh, so whoever can should be supported and uh, should be given all the uh, uh, advice that he needs to succeed uh, regardless of uh, where he comes from the religion is, he professes and so on and to avoid these traps during during uh, Buhari's time a lot of searchlight was put on the appointments of the people I don't see how my life changes when the minister of FCT is a Muslim or a Christian, Christian. Once he can do what is right, uh, I mean, nobody would deny the fact that Abuja has changed. Nobody can deny that. It's because somebody is there and that person is doing the right thing. Yes. So, uh, whether he's a Muslim, whether he's a Christian, I'm looking at the result that I'm getting now. Islam has, has taught us that. Buhari, I mentioned Buhari. When, when Buhari came in, uh, he had these uh, security chiefs, and most of them were Muslims, about three of them or so, yes. at a time maybe four. The noise that you know, greeted that was, was, was deafening. Now, with the current dispensation, we have five Christians as security chiefs. Only the chief of air staff is a Muslim. One beautiful thing is nobody 
is shouting. Nobody is calling for any change. Nobody is calling for any removal. And, we are, and, and the security situation is, is improving. They are trying their best. We are seeing that result. Even the state governors are cooperating. Now that the Muslims are silent about the number, I think that is how it should be. When the situation changes or equation changes in the future, in case somebody sees competence and result in Muslims running the security architecture of the country, there shouldn't be a noise that, we, that Buhari met when he did his own uh, tenure. Yes. So I think that is what we should be looking at. Let us look at what can you produce as a person? What can you give this country as an expert? I don't want to know your religion. Tell me how my life will be better as a Nigerian. I'm for you. Indeed. Tell me how my life can change and I can live a better life like you know because a typical example is the you know the electricity tariff now band A you know nobody cares whether you're a Christian or a Muslim just buy your units put it there if it finishes go and buy more now let, 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 let's what, what, what is happening now is if, you, if, if your unit is from the old d d dispensation yes. you will have problem you have bought it but how can it go into the new one <laughs> So you see, it's, it's a dilemma we seem to find ourselves. Let, let, let's now come in words, you know, apart from tribe, ethnicity, religion, and all that. Even within the religion we practice, as Muslims and Christians, we have different sects. Even then, there's a lot of disagreement. You understand? You know, the, 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 the Tijania will say the Shia is that, the Catholic will say the Protestant is that. And all. So, so how can we redefine how we look at our faith itself? Because I always tell people when they ask me which sect do you belong to, I said there was no sect during the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I am a Muslim. I belong to no sect. So how can we rethink ourselves, you know, and, 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 and you know, bring it into our religion and how we practice it? Thank you very much for that. Um, I'll go straight to that. You see, uh, religions or religiosity, we can look at it as a uh, traffic light. We have the red, we have the amber, and the green. Yes. There are some areas within each religion that we can say are green. Okay, like for example, in Islam, we pray five times a day, we believe we should go to Hajj, we believe we should fast in the month of Ramadan. In Christianity too, there are many principles that are that cross across board yes. that all Christians know about the um, personality of Jesus Christ, for example. There may be little variations here and there, but we know that that's a central figure in Christianity. Nobody doubts that. Mm. So that's the green area. Be good to your neighbor, be kind to the needy, assist the oppressed, you know, be generous. Every religion has that, I believe. Mm. So that's the green part of it. Then we have the amber, where um, interpretations of certain texts and practices may have some differences amongst them. It happens in Islam, it happens in Christianity. There are also the red light too, where within each religion, they don't want to cross, they don't even want to talk about it, they don't want to go there at all. The most important thing is, we have a traffic light in place. You know when to stop, you know when to move, you know when to even park off the road. Mm. So I see many of those differences, in my own opinion, as uh, part of what makes uh, religious practices to be interesting. And unique. And unique and dynamic. Intra-religious criticism. Every religion should be busy criticizing each other. No, you are going overboard. No, you are not doing enough. It's part of what what promotes intellectual aspect of religiosity. If everything were just to be based on emotions, ah, religion would be boring. Mm. So, for scholars in Islam, for scholars in Christianity, for example, even scholars in uh, traditional uh, religion, there's Ogun, there's Shongo, there's this one, there's, they have their various things amongst them that they know and they understand. I've never seen a Shongo man fight an Ogun person. Mm -mm. I've never seen them fight each other in public. Somebody who wears a masquerade thing 
will not go and be fighting with somebody who worships Oshun, for instance. They understand their things amongst themselves and they don't cross their red lights. Why don't we, Muslims and Christians, also recognize these things and know that we can never think the same way as human beings? We have not been designed begin to respect to like, each other. Thank you. We have not been designed to think the same way, to look at the same thing. Even people who are atheists who don't believe in God at all, they still have their various ways of looking at issues. And that is part of the beauty of humanity. We are all stars in the sky. And everybody should twinkle as much as they want. Mm -hmm. They Diversity cannot. Is yes, one star cannot say it's dominating the whole sky. And if you look at the Quran, says of Kokulu, the Elim in Alim, mm. above or better learned than any learned person is someone who is more learned. So the more knowledge you have, the more you realize that some people know better than you. So as not to have that spiritual pomposity, these differences mm. are a blessing on their own. Mm. The only thing I like to stress from what we have been saying is, uh, according to Nigerian. Um, is ethics or something like that we have about seven of them one of them is religious tolerance mm. i have always advocated that we should stop calling it religious tolerance because to tolerate means you are so bad i'm just managing to stay mm. with you mm. i'm just tolerating you mm. that tolerance doesn't sound positive mm. why don't we say religious cooperation mm. okay that's a better word. Yes, it's a religious cooperation where Muslims and Christians will come together to achieve something. You know, what have we from our mosques? Cohabitation. From the churches. How many scientists have we encouraged to bring forth their discoveries for the benefit of humanity? How many new things have we invented? The churches try from choir groups we see big musicians going to the world to do things. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure if that was the intention, but at least something has been produced. But why don't we do more than that? Produce the kind of things that will bring honor to our religiosity and our religious practices. It goes beyond the genuflections of our religious kuto that we wear. We should go into what is my religion bringing to humanity. Mm. So I wish if we begin to think in terms of that, this internal strife will not even be there anymore. Mm. Because everybody, every religion within their group, they know we have to cooperate. The Christians will cooperate. And Muslim Christians and other adherents of other beliefs, if we all have religious cooperation mm. amongst us, we have a goal, we have a target, and then we can go places. Mm. I think we should emphasize on that. I don't know if we are still going to get there but I have an observation about a segment of Nigerian society that we have so neglected to our own peril. Perhaps okay. that is why we are where we are now. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Maybe Thank when you. we come back from uh, the break, we'll need to take a break now. And uh, you have emphasized the need not to talk about tolerance, but religious cooperation. Okay, we'll take a break now. Thanks for staying with us. We are still discussing the issue of rekindling the spirit of brotherhood. And uh, we want to go to Ibadan uh, studio right now where we have Reverend Dr. Israel Akonji. Uh, Reverend Dr. Akonji, you have been following the conversation here. We have talked about the issue of religious cooperation. And I know that in the Bible, the Ten Commandments, the major commandment is about love. And Christ even said that uh, we should treat each other equally. That God Almighty gives reign to both the just and the unjust. Now, there's this, um, is it, um, uh, what's, what's his name now, in uh, America. He said, man should not be judged by the color of his skin, nor by his religion or ethnicity, they should be judged by his character, the content of his character. That is uh, uh, Martin Luther Jr. Yes. So how do we begin to promote that character instead of looking at religion, ethnicity, or the background? But the content of our character, our competence, our integrity, and the skills should be our focus. Thank you very much. And uh, 
I want to thank uh, the, uh, the brother there who, who uh, said we should move beyond religious tolerance. The, the, the word tolerance, like he rightly said, is a little derogatory of the other. It makes one have a feeling of superiority over the other. And he has uh, brought in the issue of religious cooperation. I will even go a little further to talk about religious appreciation. Uh, I, I was once in, in a conference, it was a scholarly conference uh, in the United Kingdom. And the, this uh, presenter came from somewhere in the Middle East. And his topic was on Islam in West Africa. So uh, I was quite interested. So I sat down in the hall. And this man mentioned Islam in Africa. He said a few things about uh, Islam in Ghana. And he said a few things about Islam in, in Kenya. And then Islam in South Africa. These were the areas he covered. Uh, uh, I think uh, he was saying Islam in, in uh, sub-Saharan Africa, something like that. That was his topic. And I was there listening, a Christian from Nigeria. And when it was question time, I, and question or contribution time, I stood up. I said, uh, our guest lecturer, I want to really thank you for the lecture you have given. But I am shocked that you will be talking about Islam in sub-Saharan Africa, and you did not mention Nigeria? You were giving us Ghana and uh, three examples. When you put all the Muslims in those three countries together, they are not up to half of the Christians in Nigeria. Why did you not veer into looking at Islam in Nigeria? And you are talking about these other places. You could see that the man, when he finished, he apologized. said, well, he just limited himself to those areas. I, I said, can you imagine somebody being given a topic to speak on Islam? In fact, if he had spoken on Nigeria alone, it would have covered for all the others. So there, again, what was I doing? I was uh, appreciating the Islam going on in Nigeria, the, the, the vastness, the fact that uh, you can't talk about Islam in Africa and not talk about Nigeria. And I, I was there as, as a pastor appreciating uh, that Islam is grounded in Nigeria and Islam must be spoken about when you are, uh, in Nigeria when you are speaking about Islam in Africa. In terms of uh, religious appreciation, again, or, or, or appreciation of one another, I am a Yoruba man, but uh, I can say my parents are the Yorubas. I was born in Barkin Laji, and uh, I grew up in the north. I studied in the north, and so every, every northerner, either Christian or Muslim, I see them as my brothers, and of course, even people from the east, because we grew up in the same school, same primary school, Rocha, Sokorocha, all of us, we attended the same school and everything and grew together. And in our community in Barkin Ladi, we even maintain uh, uh, a platform which we call Diverse But United. On the platform, we talk to one another, encourage one another. Those who are looking for jobs that are Muslim boys, they come freely to me. They need jobs. Some people want to go on pilgrimage to Mecca and they are coming to me to say, please, Pastor, how can you help us? We want to go to Mecca. They can discuss that with me. It's not a no-go area of discussion with me. I believe that uh, there is a sense of appreciation that we need to bring. I preach a lot of times in various contexts, whether in the North, East, or South, and as I preach, I come up with uh, Hausa proverbs. These, Hausa, uh, these proverbs are from the ethnic group that we call the houses. You know, reading, talking to people about God. I, I, I said, I read somewhere, it said, Allah Gatankoa. Allah Gatankoa. Somebody wrote it on his vehicle. 
And it was while I was preaching, I was mentioning this. The meaning of Allah Gatan Kowa means this this from this is from uh, the Hausa philosophy of life that God is everybody's heritage. Nobody can manipulate God and say he's mine alone. We are all on earth because God has put us here. He gives us rain, he gives us sunshine. Has he said that the rain is for Christians or for Muslims alone? Has he said the sunshine is for one group? God loves all. He created all of us. And therefore, we must look from that philosophy of life. So I can preach. Uh, the Hausa people will say uh, something like Babangbo uh, say Megogin Karfi. That means that when you're eating a big cola, the kind of stain it you put on your mouth, the kind of brush you need must be of, of, uh, of iron. But this is, this is a great philosophy of life that conveys to you the thought pattern of the person in the north. And it is useful everywhere. That is how a proverb from the southwest and southeast can be useful everywhere. I want us to live our lives appreciating one another. You can say something that an Igbo man says. You can say something a Yoruba man says. You can say something a Hausa man says without feeling intimidated because embedded in those philosophies of life are truths that can be very, very helpful. And therefore, we should go beyond tolerance. I accept the word cooperation, which is like what we are even doing now, but I want us to stem it up to the level of appreciation. Now, I want to say again that when it comes to appreciation, sometimes we are not doing well enough in Nigeria. And, and let me tell you why. Um, appreciation, uh, when a Christian sees a Muslim doing something great and that person ought to be appreciated, you know, sometimes the Christian will not appreciate the Muslim. Simply because if I appreciate him, that means I'm promoting Islam. A lot of times, Muslims will see something good that a Christian has done, and the Muslims will not appreciate the Christian. Because they will be thinking if they appreciate a Christian, that means they are promoting Christianity. That is not right. We ought to appreciate those who do well, whether they are Christians or Muslims, and encourage them to continue to do well. In the same way, when somebody is doing something wrong, I should not say because he's a Christian, if he's doing something wrong, then I will be quiet about it. A Muslim should not say, okay, a fellow Muslim, since it is a Muslim, he's your brother, therefore he cannot do what is wrong. No. To encourage this brotherhood, this uh, universal brotherhood and national brotherhood, we must be able to appreciate one another. And we must be willing to be humble to tell people that what they have done is wrong, even if we belong to the same faith. And the other people will be able to trust the integrity of what we say some other time. Very, very important for us in Nigeria. These I believe are some ways we, we can move forward. Now, for religious uh, preachers and teachers, I want to call us to an attitude of humility. That is what we say about God in the Christian faith through the Bible, that learning about God is in progressive revelation. That means what you know about God today, because God is too big for you to know him all at once. What you know about God today is going to be little in comparison with what you will know about him tomorrow if you are consistently studying his word, keeping in faith and in prayer. Therefore, in the journey of progressive revelation, you are able to know things you never knew before. And because of that, a religious leader should be humble enough to say, um, uh, this is how it should go now. Yes, in the past, I used to say this. But because now I have understood more of what God is saying, 
we can do things better. And uh, in fact, at a point, you can even completely negate what you said in the past. Unfortunately, I believe that religious leaders on all sides, they are not humble enough to accept that they cannot know all of God at once. They are just learning. They are just studying. And when they now come in contact with the truth, instead of them to now stand by the truth, they, they keep quiet on the truth and they now continue to eulogize what they said 10 years ago, which actually they have found to be wrong. I believe that one of the greatest things that religious leaders can do for our country is when they publicly say, oh, I used to think this way before, but now I know better by my own studying of God. Don't be proud. Don't try to tell people that you know everything about God. We are still growing. And God does not reveal everything to us at once. He wants to see our obedience. And then he, he makes us see more and more of him. So yeah. these are the things I would say. The Bible teaches us that we should love everybody. Why? Because John 3, 16, which everybody there knows, for God so thank, loved thank the God. world. The Bible says something. Well, thank you very much, uh, Reverend Hello. Dr. Uh, Akonji, for your contribution there. You've spoken a lot about religious appreciation and also for the need for religious leader to begin to humble themselves because God shows himself in faces. It's multifaceted. Thank you so much for your contribution. We'll get back to you later, but let's come back to the studio. And uh, I want... Uh, Professor Rafa, to speak to the issue of content of character, you know, that man should not be judged by the color of his skin, nor by his religion or where he comes from. They should be judged by the content of his character, his skills, his competence, that if we emphasize on those, then, I mean, the, the, the world will be a better place to live in. Thank you very much um, once again. Um, before I go into that, let me just add a little bit about the issue of religious tolerance, religious appreciation, and religious cooperation, as my brothers have um, observed or make some of their, uh, you know, or give it all some of their opinion. I think um, these words can also be incorporated. But what is more important is the meaning. What does that imply? So when we talk about religious tolerance, religious appreciation, and because by the time we talk about cooperation, some of that may also be looking at it from different perspectives. Okay. But the most important is like, what does that imply? And I like the uh, observation as well, because sometimes when we talk about religious tolerance, because it is generally accepted now, mentioned when we talk about religious tolerance, you know, people you know, uh, as look at it as, um, yes, it is a way of understanding and appreciate, appreciating other people's religion, irrespective of what you profess as a Muslim or as a Christian. So what is more important for us, uh, is, uh, just like they have said, it is for us to look at uh, which word is more closer to the content, the meaning, and then so that it will be more acceptable. We are talking about universality of words, so we can look at universality of that yeah. word also. So thank you very much for that um, contribution. Again, uh, the issue of uh, merit, we have talked about the issue of competence and we have said so much about it. Um, again, I still want us to go back because just like I said, we have everything in Islam. Mm. Islam has provided with all these criteria. And then we look at the Prophet Wasallam, peace be upon him, as um, a person of character. And that is why even Rasulullah uh, himself said, if to the my he said, I have been sent to uphold good characters. So that means that in Islam, character is key. In as much as you are a Muslim, you need this criteria, you need this quality. And that is why even the social salam again the prophet, in terms of marriage, he said to the Muslims, to parents especially, do anybody that comes to you. You believe in his religious practice and his character. Give him your child in terms of marriage. So this to tell us that we have a basis in Islam, that character play a vital role in our lives. Because this is a family. This is a unit of the society that is going to grow 
to become part and parcel of a society and Islam has given us a character, look at the character. So this implies that we can apply this to any other aspect of our lives if really we want to succeed. And the issue of we talk about, we're talking about universality of brotherhood. And we have set also at the basis that Allah SWT has given us that don't look at the color, don't look at the culture or race or tribe. You understand? And the, but at the end of the, the Prophet, Allah SWT says, he said the most honored amongst you is the person who has fear of Allah, fear of God in him. And so you can see that even where you have Christians, you have Muslims, sometimes you look at them and you, you assess that person in terms of his character and say, Kai, this is a good Muslim, this is a good Christian. Why? Because his behaviors, his characters, his ways of doing things are maybe in, in, in tandem with his religious practice. But then again, what makes us to understand until when you understand the religious practice of each of this of this religion, you will understand that is what I'm trying to say that we need to understand. We need to say, okay, if I'm a Muslim, I think it is also uh, a role, it is it is a duty upon me to understand my brother's religion. If he's a Christian, what does Christianity preaches? What does Islam Christianity says? And that is, it still revolves around religious appreciation or corporate. So that when that person is practicing his religion, you'll be able to appreciate. I wonder want to use the tolerance, tolerance again. You should have to understand that yes, this person is going in accordance to his religious. And that is why we also encourage this issue of interfaith. Interfaith does not mean that you, you are leaning towards another person or it will decrease your faith or iman or whatever or belief system no it's about you understanding the concept the true teachings of that religion because that is also will bring about was peaceful coexistence and you can see a muslim sometimes if he is he is learning or he knows the basic of christianity say, huh helen why are you doing this but your religion does not profess this you can correct a non-muslim and the same thing vice versa for a christ for a christian also if he understands islam and he sees a friend his friend who is not a muslim, christian of course but a muslim going going beyond the teaching of ah maryam or muhammad what you just teaches this why am i not doing it think for example uh, maybe you are in the, in the gathering of, uh, of of muslims and christians and it is time for prayer zuhur prayer for example and the Muslims among them do not make a shake to go and observe their prayers. This is about religious, the religious appreciation. You can also tell the person, please, is it not time for your prayers? Have you forgotten? In a more strategic, in a more political way, in also that he, that person will not feel offended. And the same thing, vice versa. So what we are saying is that uh, we need to understand good characteristics of what to, it implies to be a good Muslim, mm -hmm. what it implies to be a good Christian, yes. so that by the time we be able to do that, and we add it up with good character, of course, Islam has embedded the faith and the character, mm -hmm. and so when, once you have the two, you become at least a, 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 we call a good practicing Muslim, yes. and the same thing with the Christian, but if you have one, something is missing, and this is what we are, is happening in our society today, we can be Muslims, but our characters may differ. Thank exactly. you very much. Yes, uh, thank you professor. so much. Yes, yeah, and we've seen, you know, uh, religious appreciation even during football games now. They, you know, they stop for the for the Muslims to break their fast and then continue. We cannot finish this conversation without talking about one significant aspect of Nigerian life. That is the social media and how religious clerics use it, you know, to, to, to propagate, you know, their religion and sometimes in a very negative way. Well, Ustaz Abu Bakr Sadiq Mohammed, can you tell us on how, do we need to, to sort of caution our clerics on how they use the social media and pass out message to the to, 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 to public in just one minute? Yes, in 60 seconds. <laughs> 60 seconds? Yes. yes. <laughs> I want we have uh, run out of time. Yeah, yes, mm. almost. 
I wanted to 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 help uh, Doctor okay, Israel yes. because you know he was trying to quote from the Bible and the voice went okay, off. Yes. He was trying to quote uh, John three sixteen. Yes. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Yes. Uh, I think that is fair to Doctor. Yes. Uh, on social media. Uh, that is really a very big uh, problem because the handles are so many and uh, it's like uh, a free for all everybody does what they like and uh, they say what they like uh, and uh, nobody is following up uh, in that but recently there was something that happened from the islamic side uh, somebody said some uh, unpalatable words against uh, one of the leaders in the country and uh, I think that person was 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 traced and uh, was cautioned seriously uh, and he had to to uh, retrace his uh, steps apologize I think that is how it should be uh, and let it not be confined to to people in authority I mean whoever speaks anything that is that is not good uh, from whatever religion because there was a, a case of a pastor I think in the church mm. that uh, was uh, preaching and he was calling for people to, when they see anybody around the, the church they should kill them uh, unfortunately even a governor came in and uh, was trying to protect him that was very bad but in the case of the re re recent one I think against Her Excellency the, the, the consort of uh, the leader uh, that that Muslim cleric was seriously warned, and he had to to come openly and and apologize. So, if the security agencies can can be so effective, uh, people knowing that when you say anything, you are not you, you will not go just like that. You, you you will be traced wherever you are. There is no hiding place for anybody that is trying to to bring commotion. All right. Hmm. They they really should be should be put in their in their okay. place. Thank you so much, uh, Ustaz uh, Muhammad. Uh, just in 30 seconds, yes. let's let's get your parting word. I want us to... Just 30 seconds. Yes, I want us not to neglect this young generation of people. They are larger in number. They are very energetic. Mm. They are diverse in their ways of thinking. For any nation to truly grow, we have to harness these young people. Let them be aware of what is going on. Let us give them more orientation. Mm. That is where our strength actually lies. Thank you so yeah, much, uh, so uh, uh, Ustaz uh, Adeyemi. There, we must harness the potentials of, young of the young ones. Okay. Okay. Um, Ustaz Abdul Fattah Adeyemi is the former, is the founder CEO. Banakum Family Counseling Center, Abuja, a director, International Center for Islamic Culture and Education, Al Nur Mosque, Abuja. Thank you so much for a very enlightening conversation yeah, this good. morning. Ustaz Abubakar Sadiq Muhammad, National Mosque, Abuja, and managing director, Cameral Travels and Tours. It's been a pleasure, as always, to have you join us. Professor Rafat Abdul Hamid, member of Women in Dawa, also joins us here in the studio. It's a pleasure. You came in and gave your own perspective to us. And from our Ibadan studio, we had Reverend Dr. Israel Akonji, President of Nigerian Baptist Convention, Fellow of African Religion, and President of All Africa Baptist Fellowship. Thank you so much, sir, for joining this conversation and bringing in your own perspective. And that's how it's been on Good Morning Nigeria today. Join us tomorrow for another interesting edition. I am Jumai Yesu. And I am Ademola Adoye. Have a pleasant day.